Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated in the World Government Summit held remotely under the patronage of the Vice President of the UAE, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. His Highness participated alongside UAE Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development, Noura Al Khabi. The summit attracts world leaders and speakers, an elite of experts and specialists, a number of officials of international organisations and business leaders. His Highness spoke in a session titled The Next Decade with Youth Leadership, where he said that the Kingdom, with the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, has given Bahraini youth opportunities and prominent leading positions, which affirms Bahrain's keenness to empower the youth adding that this was translated by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in highlighting the position of the Bahraini youth within Team Bahrain and empowering them in various fields. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the world is facing many great challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic, which is an opportunity to learn how to deal with the future challenges that may occur. He highlighted the greater efforts exerted by young people in various countries in containing the challenges and repercussions imposed by the pandemic. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also noted that diverse and innovative platforms must be created to communicate with young people in a better way to plan the desired future based on placing the youth at the forefront and in leading positions. He asserted that the importance of investing in young people and supporting them because they will be the main pillar supporting development. During his participation, His Highness also presented many ideas and visions on empowering the youth and the importance of instilling the love for knowledge, exploration and creativity and emphasising their role in building nations. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness is here with us to share his thoughts on empowering the youth and the importance of cultivating curiosity and creativity to restore hope for the years ahead. We're going through unprecedented situations. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented to us unsettling changes in all aspects of our lives. The pandemic has had an impact on the youth, their education, employment, business plans. The resultant situation needs to be addressed. In this context, I would like to engage your highness on a few pressing issues related to the youth. We would like to know how you see the role of youth in the current circumstances. And I suppose our focus should be on how to transform the challenges into opportunities. Your highness, would you like to make some introductory remarks before I ask the questions? Uh, um, alaykum <laughs> Um, I would like, first of all, to thank this uh, beautiful organization of the World Government Summit. Um, I hope um, the outcome of this summit and the uh, ideas that will be presented today uh, will be fruitful. Uh, please allow me as well to thank uh, my brother, Sahib uh, al Sheikh Hamdan bin Muhammad bin Rashid al Maktoum, Wali Yahd Dubai, ala itahta lil fursa, and giving me the, the privilege uh, to come here as a speaker and to share my thoughts uh, with you all. Thank you. It's certainly wonderful to be here with you virtually. And I'm sure this is going to be an exciting session hearing from you. My first question is, how does this road to recovery and rehabilitation look to your highness, particularly for the youth? What are the anticipated changes with regards to the youth in the coming period? Uh, um, Noura, you know, you, you've, uh, you've touched base a, a, uh, a topic that really is sincere to my heart and is actually um, my day-to-day -day concern. It's always in the back of my head. It's always ahead of my agenda. So first of all, uh, first thing comes to understand the impact of COVID-19. Uh, we really need to understand that it has come at the intersection of one, an international economic correction, where youth were already fearing the unknown. 
uh, with regards to their uh, livelihood uh, and to a mass global pandemic that restricted movement and separated communities into automized cells, injecting the sense of uh, loneliness and removing the sense of community. Um, three, um, an unprecedented internet penetration, which dissipates images of the perfect life, injecting a sense of, um, let me describe it, inadequacy. So our youths are uh, feeling fear of the future and their chances of survival, fear of the unknown, alone, inadequate, while social media shows the uh, good life. This is the perfect storm. Um, if statesmen, communities, and governments don't recognize the risk, and if they don't move quickly to mitigate losses to their future, recognizing that their youth is their future, um, the impact will be uh, dire and uh, severe. Um, but for those countries that recognize this, there is an incredible opportunity. Uh, the community that gets uh, this right, in my opinion, um, will secure an incredibly prosperous future for its people. Uh, and I believe that our King, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Allah Ta'ul Umrah, has gotten this right and had ordered uh, that we double down efforts in adapting and evolving our youth sector and to do so institutionally. Uh, His Majesty ordered that we undertake the following. Um, first of all, observing youth's uh, emotions. His Majesty had taught us that it's not enough for the youth uh, to be safe. He must feel safe as well. Um, so we developed the what I call the five plus one, emotional data points that we wish to develop. For the first time, we are actively attempting to track our youth's feeling to see how we can help them in an institutional matter. Um, as you know, perception is everything. Uh, we want to know if they feel safe, seen, supported, wanted, trusted, and most importantly, hopeful. That's my five plus one. Uh, environmentally, we want to join, uh, or we want to know if they perceive Bahrain to be an open, competitive, and just environment where they can reach their individual aspirations with minimum interferences. Um, second topic as well, synthesizing and creating hope. Actively manage the positive narrative. This is our light at the end of the dark tunnel to guide our youth. We are shedding light on opportunities. Um, open, Noura, you, you, you know Bahrain really well, uh, but open any newspaper in Bahrain and see the endless pages of real jobs opportunities waiting for our youth. We are developing a unified online national portal called FORAS, uh, which is currently in its better stage of development of internship, apprenticeships, and upskilling opportunities. Um, we are shedding light on real success stories from rags to riches through discipline and perseverance. Um, we are teaching youth uh, to plan and execute. Uh, Noor, I might uh, warn you that you have to buckle up because you have touched base the, the, the topic of my life. So I'm going to keep on going. Um, we are uh, redeveloping our youth center to become youth empowerment centers. Uh, the key objective of the centers is to teach youth uh, tools to plan and execute their future in a safe, cooperative, and in a positive celebratory community where uh, the team celebrates each individual's win. Uh, we teach them also to author their futures, uh, write your target, write down your plan, put an aligned positive team and community around you to support. Revisit this periodically. Um, if we are successful there, we will inject this into the education system. Um, and focus on that because we are taking it step by step. So we are partnering with our youth uh, through Hope Fund. We have just launched the Hope Fund whose mandate is to create programs um, which allows for the selection of youth initiatives, businesses, and social ventures for financial partnerships um, 
our job is to first of all discover then monitor and groom and then showcase to the world uh, our um, success story. So um, the conclusion um, is that the youth sector has been disrupted by COVID-19 and must will evolve. And the direction is clear to us. But that the opportunities um, to get this right and have our youth um, end up are rampant. Uh, we are positive. Uh, that the future can will be full of opportunities for our youth. <laughs> Thank you, Highness. I'm 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 not surprised uh, specifically by knowing uh, uh, your passion, uh, the way you encourage and empower youth. Um, you have the mindset of an Iron Man. Uh, winning uh, is the only uh, option, uh, and I think that you know everything you laid down is something that. Uh, we all, not just the youth, um, you know, even even us or even governments or, or or institutions is important for them to look into. So thank you very much. This was really inspiring. And and your highness, there's always the question uh, with regards to uh, what's happening right now in the economy, the economic recovery, uh, which is in everyone's mind nowadays, um, with the slowdown, with the, you know, with the limiting of timing and everything with the pandemic. Um, it's important to hear advice in terms of how they can help their societies and countries in such economic recovery. Do you think youth in our region are, are better equipped to contribute to their uh, counterparts uh, elsewhere? Um, yes, actually, if one looks around today, we will note and appreciate that the hopeful positive spirit of the youth is what fuels all the new solutions of today's challenges. Uh, it's not easy. Um, this will no doubt continue and more so now than ever. Uh, for today's challenges, uh, we need new solutions and new fresh ideas. And the youth are strategically positioned uh, to provide this new uh, insights, considering that they have not been indoctrinated by old dogmatic uh, processes. Um, youths are extremely well placed and ready for original thoughts, which is what we need today and going forward. Therefore, this is essential to now put in systems to listen to youth's ideas and to experiment and execute what works. We have also um, remember that youths are very vested in current problems because the future is theirs. So they will do what is necessary to protect it and protect their community. Uh, this applies in all realms. Uh, this applies in the societal activity, or I, I, oh, sorry, uh, social activities, um, in community buildings and integration, in uh, commerce and uh, businesses where they will uh, invigorate the economy. Um, and also, last but not least, in the social science spheres uh, and reformulating and aligning our social contract uh, together. So it's a huge uh, picture that I'm seeing and we have to put it all together. But what is key and what is the heart uh, of this question is, let's remember that the future is theirs. So they have to, they have to shape it towards the, um, the goal they have to achieve. Absolutely, Your Highness. Uh, and I think with, with your continuous government efforts, um, especially in our region, um, uh, to empower the youth in all aspects of, as you mentioned, from economy to social life, uh, how do you see the future uh, roadmap uh, for governments in boosting the next generation's role? Uh, because this is always a question right, right now with regards to what's next um, um, and how can we maximize their skills, uh, uh, capacities and roles? Um, I think it would be interesting, Your Highness, um, to uh, if we can, if you can reflect uh, on the following areas, such as youth participation and decision making, their engagement in social initiatives, um, entrepreneurship, um, and so on. And basically, uh, Nora, you mean as well youth empowerment in this sense. So I will I will I will stay in between these two brackets, or else I'm gonna go on and on. Believe me. So 
There's no question that the positive effect of youth empowerment is immense and touches on all segments of society. Uh, but the key positive effect is original thought, uh, innovation and freeing energy and resources to build even greater projects uh, for mankind. Um, let me give you some examples to explain what empowering uh, youth does. Education. Uh, we were told uh, that education is when you physically go to class and sit with your peers for seven or eight hours a day in a school classroom in an attempt to be molded, uh, followed by endless hours of homework. Um, shows you what type of student I was. Um, youth have now gamified education through apps, games that teach you languages, skills, and giving you points, allowing you to compete. Um, crowdsource problem solving, where problems are shared with public community online and resolved. Um, online education, where you learn at your own pace and based on your own interest. Um, flexible home learning, uh, which is melting away. The age-based grade system and focusing on your capability. Imagine a 11-year-old kid uh, doing calculus because he can. So, you know, it, it, it's incredible. Um, I'm, I'm a father of four kids and they, they surprise me every day. So this is one huge sector. Second sector is the jobs. Now this is the real deal here uh, to tell the students, welcome to the real world. So we were told that jobs are where you go for eight or more hours to perform a particular task with no freedom. Um, youth are now freeing themselves and have now changed the idea of jobs. Um, let me explain. The idea of a collection of jobs instead of one job. Uh, online por portals where you can tender specific work to specific people and pay them for that work only. Uh, individuals as subcontractors where each person acts like their own company, like an Uber driver, for instance, uh, with his own car, uh, free to accept many jobs or not. Um, incentive-based uh, payment schemes uh, where youths now want a park, uh, a pa want a part of the risk and part of the reward as well. Um, employees are no longer being rated by employers only. Now employees are also rating their employers. So as you can see, See, uh, there is a lot of positive that comes from empowering and freeing youths to reach their aspirations and to solve the community's problems and address their needs. The net positive effect, believe me, is tremendous. Your, your Highness, uh, your answer is perfect, Keith, was a perfect uh, for our next question with regards to the future of youth and their employment. and. Uh, and, and, I, and I see how you even, um, you know, uh, interact with your kids of, uh, in the future who will be winning. I loved the video of after six years, who's going to be winning and, and galloping. And, 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 and I saw this video like three times in, in a row. No, um, they, will, they will lose the bet. I will not, I will not surrender. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so, so we wait for the next six years and see who wins. But I, and I, and I think this is where... Uh, it's amazing with 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 you as a father mentioned on the pluses and minuses uh, of a remote work. We are meeting remotely, um, and and given the special character characteristics of the millennials uh, and giving their mastery and the use of new technologies. Uh, this question is very interesting. How do you think remote work can help support youth employment? Can this change the levels of unemployment among the Arab youth? Uh, beautiful. Arab communities. So I, I don't like to alienate ourselves uh, away from what, what, what's so-called or the perception that people think because you know, Arabs today are uh, roaming around Mars, and thanks to you all over there. So it, it, it gives us this power. And I'm already having goosebumps right now while talking about our, our ability uh, to, to bring back 
our history. And, and I'm not a person who talks in, in, in the past, but it's very good to remind our people about our history and whom we are. What were we? What did we do? And then what are we looking forward to? So back to, back to our subject. So the whole idea of employment seems to be evolving in front of us, right? And it seems like it's time to redefine unemployment and the way we track it and address it. Um, technology can play a big role in helping our fellow citizens. Uh, employment has always and historically been physical attendance at the site with a single group taking instructions from a single authority, uh, part of a larger institution. Well, what we see on the ground is, is a changing landscape. Um, we see youths uh, subscribing to become Uber or Kareem drivers when available, uh, while still keeping their other jobs on uh, or businesses' uh, interests. Uh, we see youth uh, have multiple uh, freelancing online jobs through portals such as Upwork. Uh, we see youths working remotely for a single employer at home or in a coffee shop. Um, we see youths creating content online and in their particular fields and monetizing their brand and content. Therefore, we must first revisit the metrics for defining unemployment. So the new definition of unemployment should, and I need you to think with me as well, but this is my, my opinion. Um, so the new definition of unemployment should encompass those citizens that are temporarily unproductive individuals due to circumstances cannot secure an income through voluntary interactions, regardless if it's a single employer, multiple employers, whether in a country or abroad. Um, these individuals are owed targeted support from our society that fits their needs and prepares them for future success because we all want to thrive uh, together. Now, you've been asking me questions, Noura, Here's a million dollar question. Why do we need to redefine unemployment? I'll give you my answer. Uh, text me yours. So, because the alternative is to stigmatize the many millions of young individuals that are productive and thriving in their um, own way. These productive individuals should not be recorded as unemployed when they are productive members uh, of society. So remote work and similar innovations will no doubt change the unemployment uh, landscape and provide endless opportunities to our youth. But we as regulators and legislators will need to actively support to provide the right environment for the opportunities to flourish. Your Highness, um, you certainly uh, gave me a glimpse of a hopeful future. Uh, I hope for Bahrain, for the people of Bahrain and worldwide. I appreciate your leadership, your wisdom, uh, and your time. Thank you so much uh, for joining us at the World Government Summit. Thank you. The, the, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. Uh, you keep... Uh, um, really uh, pushing hard and, and bringing the best of the best around. And you really uh, are doing a great job over there. So thanks to you all. I hope I didn't state any of the obvious. I hope I helped just a little bit. And as, as you know, I'm always hopeful. I'm always positive. Well, not COVID positive, but our positive person, I mean, who really looks forward to uh, a, a, a prosperous, um, um, many coming years, inshallah. So let's be positive. Let's think forward. Let's take those challenges because the future is ours, inshallah. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met virtually with the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Al Mu'ayyad. 
along with various officials from the Ministry in order to present its achievements and its strategies for the coming period. His Highness affirmed that the Bahraini youth enjoy the full support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, whose discourse continues to affirm the importance of the youth in various fields as a key component in the building of the future of the Kingdom. His Highness also affirmed the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for the youth in all fields, including through the government programme, in which various initiatives are intended to empower the youth to contribute to its ability to innovate and contribute to the Kingdom's development. He said that the youth have made great strides in all fields in 2020, which represents a turning point in the history of the Ministry. His Highness said that 2021 represents a new challenge for the Ministry thanks to the pandemic. He expressed his full confidence that the Ministry will meet all its challenges as it did in 2020, especially in light in its many initiatives that prove that the youth is forward-looking. During the meeting, His Highness reviewed the Ministry's achievements of 2020 and the effects in the field of youth and sports. The Ministry also presented its vision for the year 2021 through various initiatives and programmes. For his part, Amoayed expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness for the support for the Ministry, whose vision and achievements are due to the support of His Highness. BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalif bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received retired Major General Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa and retired Major General Sheikh Khalif bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The Commander-in-Chief presented to them the Medal of Excellence in appreciation of their distinguished efforts, sincere dedication and the diligence in their duties and tasks during their tenure. Defence Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al Nawemi and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Thea bin Saga al Nawemi were present. The Minister of Education, Dr Majid al Nawemi, patronised a virtual forum in celebration of the Gulf Day for giftedness and creativity in the presence of a number of talented students in various fields, including those with special needs, as well as a number of specialists in the field of excellence and talent in the Ministry. Al Nawemi hailed the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to Education and to the Ministry. He emphasised the Ministry's keenness in implementing the initiatives of the National Project for the Development of Education and Training. On this occasion, Al Nawemi praised talented students and hailed the national efforts to discover and nurture talent and creativity in the Kingdom. The Minister of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning, Isam Khalaf, said that the Ministry has taken a number of steps to achieve sustainability in food security in the Kingdom in line with the Royal Directives. He affirmed that food security is high in the government's agenda thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King and his keen interest in this important area. He said that the Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources is looking at the best possible methods to ensure food security, with a special focus on prawns, as they represent a key source of food. The Minister also affirmed the importance of regulating the process of fishing to protect the sustainability of the marine resources. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim bin Yaqub al Hamar, gave a media briefing on the Kingdom of Bahrain's most prominent housing achievements since the beginning of 2021, which is organised by the National Communication Centre as part of a series of remote government media briefings. Al Hamar affirmed the continuation of efforts to come up with innovative housing solutions to provide social housing through plans, initiatives, and programmes that achieve the Royal Order to build 40,000 housing units and the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to st distribute 5,000 housing units. He also affirmed that the Ministry's framework is to adhere to the Government's plan in this regard. Under the patronage of the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa and the Royal Command Staff and National Defence College hosted the Master's Degree Distribution Ceremony for the graduates of the National Defence Sessions 1 and 2. The BDF Chief Deputised Defence Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nawemi to distribute the certificates to the graduates of the two sessions. 
After Quran verses were recited, the Commandant of the Royal Command, Staff and National Defence College, Rear Admiral Abdullah Said Al Mansouri, delivered a speech in which he asserted that since its establishment five decades ago, the BDF has attained educational achievements thanks to the royal vision and directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He indicated that the BDF Commander-in-Chief and Chairman of the College's Supreme Council, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, has set the Royal College's strategy to implement the visions of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister which enabled the Royal College to compete with the most prestigious military colleges in their academic and practical levels. The Defence Minister then presented Master's degrees and Medals of Distinction to the graduates of the first and second National Defence Sessions. The Minister stressed that the BDF is always keen on supporting the educational process and hailed the support of His Majesty the King and the constant follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also paid tribute to the BDF Commander-in-Chief for putting in place all conditions for developing and modernising various educational curricula to reach the highest levels. Assistant Chief of Staff of Human Resources at Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa, University of Bahrain President Professor Riyad Hamza and a number of senior BDF officers also attended the ceremony. The Minister of Foreign Affairs confirmed today that it has sent a note of protest to the Qatari Minister of Foreign Affairs. The note included the Ministry's strong condemnation of a TV programme broadcast by the Qatari channel Al Jazeera, which was entitled Out of Context, on Sunday, March 7, 2021. The film contained false information and allegations put forward by hard instigators, which Qatar, Gulf and Arab countries all know receive their orders from foreign parties with ill intentions towards the Kingdom and GCC countries. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs considered this film to be inconsistent with the principles of the Alula Declaration. The Ministry also expressed Bahrain and its esteemed people's dissatisfaction with the maltreatment the Bahraini fishermen received from the Qatari Coast Guards, which contradicts the human rights principles stipulated in international covenants, charters and laws, and threatens the livelihood of Bahraini fishermen. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs stressed that it considers these actions taken by Qatar towards Bahrain as unacceptable, as they contradict the principles of good neighbourliness and contradict the principles, provisions and obligations of the Alula Declaration, which must be implemented by all countries that have signed it. The Ministry looks forward to more positive stances and constructive policies from Qatar that would help start bilateral talks to address the pending issues in order to further improve relations between the two countries to preserve the cohesion of the GCC Council and achieve its goals. The Crown Prince's International Scholarship Programme, the CPISP, has begun accepting applications for its 2022 scholarship programme. Bahraini students enrolled in Grade 11 or equivalent are set to graduate from school in 2022 and have a grade point average of 97% or above for Grade 10 and Grade 11 are welcome to apply until the 25th of March. Qualifying applicants must submit an application form available on the CPISP website at www.cpisp.bh. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 310,644 individuals had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 203,915 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,218, with 617 recoveries, 545 registered new cases and two deaths. 214 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 322 are contacts of active cases and nine are travel-related. The deceased were two female citizens aged 74 and 68. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.